Hey, good evening, everybody. It's Jason with JRRC. Um, today, as the title kind of says, we're going to go over the uh, APEP chassis, which is the green one in the back. Um, we had uh, Tony with CCXRC doing some some build and review on it, and uh, he raised a couple questions about the the chassis. His his uh, videos so I kind of want to address some of those maybe take some questions if you have any questions um, about it and uh, just go over you know basically how it's built and everything and how I have it set up and just a general overview of how to build it because I do sell these uh, both of these kits see it you see on your on your screen you get the Percy's in front with the American flag and then you got the green with the APEP on the back um, both of these chassis are, are relatively the same as far as the way that they stuff are for, for mounting things. Um, with obvious differences with the, the, the shape of the frame, the chassis and everything. But uh, nonetheless, um, these all come in, in raw aluminum form. Um, they can be pre-coated per your request, um, but I, I would need to to know ahead of time. And there is a cost difference with that, but uh, they can be they can be made. I actually have I have one right now that is a uh, a black chassis. Um, the only thing with that is the bottom plate the the holes are slightly off for the mounting, so you need to Dremel them out to fix them. But uh, this one is available um, if anybody wanted it. Uh, I was going to actually build it up uh, and get rid of the green chassis, which I may still do. I don't know. Um, but uh, they all come raw aluminum, and uh, that way you can kind of design and build them the way you want. Uh, the idea is is that this, as I've kind of stated, it's, it's a builder's kit. It is never meant to be a... Um, plug and play or by instruction type of kit um, as you can see there's several holes throughout the chassis and strategic locations um, that way you can you can do a ride wide variety of, of your, your four link suspension your sway bars uh, your electronics mounting and all that that way um, you can kind of do it the way you want. Some people don't like that. I've had people complain about it. But um, in the end, originally I built this uh, for me. Um, and just had people that that liked it. And uh, so that's why I've kind of made them available to everybody else. Uh, for those who, who may like, who may win. Um, Again, just another alternative for the standard SMT. Um, also, it's not it's not locking you into uh, a given setup as far as the uh, suspension, the axles, um, because I have the the Percy's. You can you can chop up. There's holes in there to where you can chop it up. And I know people are. Why would I buy something brand new if I'm just going to chop it up? Well. Um, the truck was the chassis, so you can use it for a clod, keep the, the cab chassis look, um, while still running a clod, but you can see the pictures of that one on, on my page. I actually have a designated clod chassis, it should be, prototype should be getting here soon, I'll be able to build that out and do some testing on that. Um, that's the, uh, Infinity, Infinity chassis, um. And uh, that one should be coming out hopefully around the first part of the year. Um, but, uh, yeah. So either way, you can build it however you want. That's the whole point behind this. I'm not trying to, to, to please the masses, just something different. Um, 
as as Tony pointed out in his videos, the um the truck you know, you go through a, a phase of trying to find out locations of things that have sway bars uh, placement. Um, if you're going to mount on the axles, if you're going to mount on the uh, trailing arms. Um, those are all options and choices that you make when you're building this. Um, so when I build mine, I build them out. I'll mock them up completely, put them together. Once I figure out where I want it, then I'll take it apart. And then... Um, take care of, of coating the chassis or painting it or whatever you're going to do. Um, now, if you, another thing too is the holes. The holes when he was, when he went his mock-up and, and everything, once he painted, painted the chassis, the holes were, were tight. Um, in raw form, these holes are tight. They're, they're made that way specifically, um, to eliminate any, um, play any chance of uh, anything coming as going askew from each other um, sway bars a nice tight fit so you don't get a lot of movement out of them um, and they're locked in and and keep everything from moving around all that stuff um, it was all designed specifically to keep everything tight and rigid um, so there is very little play even with even with uh, the anodized one you see, well, the the two in front of you are um, hydro dipped. Um, they're sear coated and hydro dipped, and then sear coated with a clear coat. So it's a real thin film that's on it already. Um, if you paint it with a heavier paint, enamel uh, paints and things like that, you're gonna gum up the holes a little bit, so you'll have to clean them out. It's not that big a deal. Like I said, it's intentionally. Uh, the tolerances are intentionally very tight um, to prevent movement in the in the pieces and parts uh, when they're installed. Um, so that's a couple things just addressing the, the the few things that he had in his videos. Again, this is the Percy's. We're not going to talk much about that. You guys have seen videos and uh, talked extensively on on this truck um, truck chassis. Uh, a couple guys out there have them and they're they're running them and We'll let them take care of that. Or if anybody has any questions, I'll be happy to do a video on it. Um, this video is just kind of focusing on the, the APEP chassis, which you see in front of you now. They said I have have a black one here. Um, a couple features about this chassis that makes it really unique to me. You know, Maybe not for others, but the reason why I built this is I got tired of um, seeing a chassis or, or a build that I like. And I'm restricted by axles i'm restricted by certain length shocks sway bars use drag links or not with the with the drag link mounted shocks um the transmissions that i can use whether it's center gearbox or um or S S S S S or you know like the wraith the the smt all that stuff you're very limited with with what's on the market right now as far as I can tell, in, in most cases, so that was that was the main purpose behind making these chassis um, to give people options. I mean, you're spending bucks on a chassis setup, give or take. I mean, I don't I don't feel that you should be locked into uh, a specific build. You should have options, and, and this is that was my intent with this. So, um, with with this a APEP. You have a set of holes here for your uh, trailing arm shock mounts. Then you have uh, your tower shock mounts here for mounting them on the axles. Um, you have several holes throughout the, the chassis. When you're putting it together, the best thing to do is to... Um, the way it's designed is, is the cross bars or the cross supports basically go in uh, every... Every corner, every corner hole around the chassis, around the perimeter, as a primary, and then internally, secondary, your battery tray, your transmission mount, your bracing, all that stuff will kind of help fill in the voids, and then you can obviously put in other ones um, to help with that. Um, hey everybody, thanks for joining. Um, 
you have any questions or about this, just let me know. I've kind of went over a little bit already, um, but right now I'm just kind of going over uh, details and stuff and taking any questions if you have them along the way. Um, so again, a lot of the holes on the inside of the chassis or inside of the frame here. Hold on. <laughs> Getting this. Alright, so, um, you know, a lot of people give me grief about all the holes in it. Well, you know, that's that's all well and good. Um, they have their opinion, and I have mine. But the, having all these, um, the battery trays and everything for it are completely modular. Um, and what I, what I mean by that is, um, I'll show you kind of the kit here. Um... And I'll show you on the, on the, the finished truck. But you have a receiver box. You put your bo or your receivers stuff in there. Um, you have a couple plates for mounting your ESCs. Um, you have cross cross support pieces, and this is where you locate these virtually anywhere on this chassis. Uh, high, low, front, back, top, bottom, you know, whatever. You can put them anywhere on there that you want to get your balance right. Um, whether it be because of your, the batteries you're using or the equipment or whatever, you, or you're, you want to keep the nose down, you don't want to pull a lot of wheelies, you put your weight up front, uh, all the stuff like that. Uh, the crossbars actually run inside of them, so it creates uh, one support for the, the electronics equipment and also a cross support for the chassis itself. Um, you get two battery trays, several of the mounts and everything in it. Um, so you can use the trays. Um, so you can use the trays to, you know, like in in mine, um, my clod because these come. It, this kit comes, so you can use it on a shafty or a clod setup. That's why there's two battery trays, one for the battery. Um, if you want to run one battery or two batteries, you can put two different trays in there. Um, or like in mine, I run. My, both my dual tray and then the battery and the other. Um, so there's so many. There's a lot of different ways you can do that. But that's what all the a lot of the holes throughout the center of the the chassis are for. Um, another unique feature is um, the transmission plate. Um, obviously, the transmission plate is not unique in itself, but it has accessibility for your SMT, your ground pounder, your Wraith, your SCX10. Um, and then your aftermarket side mount uh, transmissions, uh, universal mounting holes for all of those. You also have your center holes for the SCS transmissions, whether it's freestyle or uh, RC four wheel drive. You have the mounting capability for those as well, and the same transmission mount again, giving you the option to do build it how you want, or you can switch up your build. Um, at any time and run it center gearbox or offset um, mounted like the SMT10. Uh, also, according or uh, corresponding to that, you have there's several holes here, uh, and that's for the different uh, trans uh, center gearbox transmissions for mounting the top brace for your RC four wheel drive or your freestyle. Because um, I think it's freestyle is a little bit taller than RC four wheel drive. Or vice versa. I don't remember off the top of my head. Um, plates that are coming out uh, probably around you know next year, beginning of next year, um, has several holes. Has several holes for the center gearbox, so where you can mount it, you can position it forward or aft um, a couple spots. Uh, again, to help with balance, weight transfer, things of that nature. Um, Let's see. That's pretty much the basics of the chassis itself. Um, so we'll move over to the truck. I'll show you kind of how I set up how I set up mine um, and what I use to do it. Um, we got maintenance stands <laughs> come in handy. Go into the axles. They have rubber mount pads. Um, I have these available on the website as well, jrcustomdesigns.com forward slash shop. Um, just a little plug out for that. Um, but having it up on the stand, I can actually run the truck on the stands. I can work on the truck on the stands. 
so it makes it nice and easy. Um, I'm using Jacep's Renegade uh, wheels and or tires and tribute wheels with uh, my beauty rings. They're not they're not bead locks. Um, they're just color beauty rings. You can get them in different colors. Uh, these are yellow. I have orange. You can do black, white, red, blue. Uh, there's several different colors. Like I said, they're not bead locks. If you're going for a scale look, this is not not something that you need. Um, but uh, yeah. So, anyways, then uh, going to the the axles, I use Enjora. There's two different brands. There's uh, Fomonda and Enjora. They both, I, mean, I think they come from the same factory. Um, so I don't know that one's better than the other. But uh, those are the ones I use. I'm actually, I actually purchased a bunch of Enjoras and I'm going to sell them on, online. Because a lot of the ones on Amazon, it takes forever to get. And they're always out of stock. So I'm going to try to keep some on hand just in case somebody wants any. But uh, um not an affiliate with them at all. I just I, I love their axles for the money. They're not the best. They're not the best axles out there. So don't you know get me wrong. Um, I know people will complain saying you know there's there's better stuff out there. Well of course there is. Um, if you want to pay three hundred plus for a set of axles, um, which is all well and good depending on your application. But if you're just trying to have fun with it, like I am, bash it around, play around with it. I'm not racing. Um, I could if I wanted to. Uh, the only thing is the internal gears and the diff, they're locked. They come locked from the factory. Um, and that's really the only downside, if anything. And it's hit or miss with the gears, you know, if, if they're good or not. Like, I have a set that I've been running for a long time. Never had a problem with them. Uh, this one I put in, and yesterday I was running it and blew out the, the, the ring and pinion. You know, it happens, whatever. But you can also put any internals for from a, a regular AR60 axle into this with the pumpkin and or the drive shafts. But they're all interchangeable uh, with regular AR60 parts, which makes it nice. Um, they're solid aluminum, um, really well built. Like I said, I, I run them on my trucks. I'm real happy with them. That's why I'm going to start having some on hand just to help people out if they need them in a pinch. Because, um, I mean, I can't can't make any money off them really I get them and sell them for cost and just be able to have them on hand um but anyways uh tried out the um jx i think it's a 36 um the eco boost um drive in front and rear steer on this um which works really well i gotta tune in the rear because you know it just the slightest movement at the rear makes a huge difference in the steering so I gotta mess with that a little bit but um, that's my problem not anybody else's but nonetheless um, you can get the axles put the front row axles in it and you just gotta swap some stuff around to, to make them work um, because obviously they come specifically for front or rear and then you have to flip the axle and, and swap a bunch of stuff around but not really that big a deal um, and if you don't mind tinkering it's it's really easy to, to, to take care of um next I move on to uh the sway bars the sway bars i design and have made um they'll fit smt 10s they'll fit uh several other um applications as long as they have the profile of of an smt 10 which is about 80 uh what is it 84 millimeters i believe wide on the outside um these bars will work for it. They're already pre-cut both ends. Let's see if I can show you here. Um, both ends. Both ends are flat. And then you have your, your set screw here that it goes in and locks it in place. I, uh, these, I actually, these are made of 6061, which is, is a good aluminum. But um, I'm actually having some made of 7075. Uh, they're not going to replace these, but they'll be an, an alternative to this. More of a heavy-duty kind of uh, use. They're a little bit longer, a little bit beefier. Uh, the profile, the profile of the shaft is actually made into the arm itself. So just sliding it on the shaft locks it in place, and then the, the set screw basically just holds the shaft from coming out. 
um, that prevent that'll prevent a lot of unnecessary twisting on the shaft and potentially stripping out that, that hole. Um, the other thing is you got the Trident trailing arms. Uh, these ones here are about a hundred and 34 135 millimeters long from from center to center on the rod ends um, I have some some SMT uh, direct replacements that are that are going to be coming in shortly that will fit on the stock wheelbase for SMT this I would consider I guess I'm not really calling it but I would consider it a shorter wheelbase uh, link for SMT so if you wanted to run it short wheelbase, then you could do that with these. Um, and they also accept any four millimeter um, threaded rod in on either end. So if you don't like these, or if you break them, break the rod ends, or some time, you can replace them with anything. Um, it's four millimeter. Um, the shocks I use are G-Made shocks, XD uh, 103 millimeter. I run these on all my all my vehicles pretty much except for my crawler which is sitting over there. Um, but I run I run these on all my trucks because they're fully adjustable. You can even update the springs if you want. Um, threaded shock tubes. You also have a true air over assist piggyback where you can adjust um, with just a three millimeter Allen wrench, which is really nice. Um, Currently, I'm using JuneFac drive shafts, um, and uh, I'm actually in work designing my own. I know there's a bunch of them out on the market, um, but I'm actually making my own. They're going to be uh, more or less considered a heavy-duty drive shaft, um, but you're not going to have to pay 100 plus, <laughs> 100 plus dollars for a set of them. Um, so again. Trying to make trying to make the best quality parts that I can for a more affordable price um, for people just getting into the hobby or people that have been in it for a while. Um, also working on a servo saver setup um, that, as of recently, come to find out, is not as revolutionary as I thought. <laughs> I've been working on it for a while, um, but uh, it's basically like like the uh, if you've seen the LMT. Um, servo saver that mounts to the servo itself. Um, that's that's pretty much what I'm doing, um, except it's not out of plastic. Uh, and after after the LMT came out and I saw that, I was kind of I was kind of depressed a little bit because I've been working on that for a while, not knowing that they already had had the same design and idea. Um, but nonetheless, I'm still gonna go through with it. Because this is all metal, um, and hopefully it'll be a really, uh, really high quality. But we'll find out when I get the prototypes. Um, the other thing I'm running on here is Air 3660 uh, Hobby Wing, 4300 kV on a 14 tooth pinion with the SCS gearbox in the center there. Uh, also using a Hobby Wing X Run XR8 SCT. That's a 2.4S LiPo um, ESC thing has more than enough power, uh, more than enough speed. Um, they are kind of pricey, but uh, it, I think it's worth it. Um, anybody else that's nice ESCs, I mean, they're not a Mamba X, but they are kind of like the Hobby Wings answer to the Mamba X, which I got a couple of them. I'm not the biggest fan of them. Because the motor sizes are limited, so the KVs are limited, and of course, you know, it, it doesn't work that well. So, in all my, my, I'm running Hobby Wing because I get more performance out of the motors um, for the same price as I would um, for the the castle. Um, yeah. So, all of uh, my steering links, I have I have these as well. They're eight millimeter, seventy seventy five aluminum with Traxxas heavy duty rod ends, just like everything else I sell has the Traxxas heavy duty rod ends on them. The upper links for the four link are eight millimeter as well. Um, 
they come a little long, mainly because this is a universal kit. It's not just for my truck. Um, yes, they're designed around basically for my truck, but um, they're a little long in comparison to others. Um, so you can trim them and fit them specifically to the to the to the build that you're doing. Um, you can take about 10 to 12 millimeters, uh, so five six millimeters off of each end of the um, the rod ends and still have enough meat inside to use a grub screw and everything to hold it in there and not make it uh, too flimsy um, for the application. The lower lengths, the trailing arms, you can also trim a little bit off of those if you need if you need to shorten the wheelbase a little bit. Um, the good thing, another good thing with these chassis is there's an extra set of holes uh, right next to the uh, trailing arm, so you can actually move your trailing arm in. It's about 12 millimeters, so in total you can shorten this wheelbase about an inch just by moving these in, um, without doing any other modification, and then just move your links on the upper part in to correspond to it. Um, so that's another kind of unique feature, I guess, or, or a nice feature to be able to do on the fly. You can shorten your wheelbase by almost an inch. As this sits right now, this is a 14 and a half inch wheelbase. Um, that's pretty standard. Once I get the, the SMT 10 links in, um, that'll increase to about 15 to 15.5 if you use those links, which I probably will just because I like long wheelbase. Um, so uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see when those come in how how that goes. Um, this here, I'm also getting some some wider center supports. Um, so that way, because ideally I wanted this to be a clod. I wanted to be able to run this as a clod buster. And right now, this chassis as it sits, you cannot do as a clod buster unless you have the whole jacked up suspension like the the stock <laughs> stock clod busters. Which I'm not a fan of, but if you wanted it like a racer or whatever, um, so I'm getting wider links to spread the chassis apart so the actual motor and transmission can slide in in between the rails, uh, allowing you to actually use it on this chassis. Um, so you can have a cage chassis with with clawed axles and still have a racer profile um, with your with your uh, behind the axle steering and all that stuff which I have available as well in the bracing forum um, as well um, so that'll be neat to see if that works hopefully it does I mean in my head in my head everything works but in reality <laughs> in reality it might not work so well um, uh, if you're just joining going over trying to address any issues that, that people have brought up concerns uh, with with Tony and CCXRC doing the videos um, I appreciate that. The honest feedback definitely helps me. Um, and I told him from the get go just to keep it keep it honest and real. I didn't I didn't send it to him to get praise and, and, and for everybody to think you know I got the best thing out there. Um, I, I gave it to him because I have confidence and and he'll he'll give honest feedback and so far he has. Um, so I'm kind of addressing those right now. I had one chassis actually the chassis I sent him and if you've seen his videos you'll see. Uh, two of the holes for the chassis up top um, up here were not drilled out. Um, and of all the chassis I had in the new batch, which is what he got, and this is an older older one, but the new batch he got, uh, he got the very first set. And um, none of the other ones had the holes issue, so I'm not sure how that happened or what the deal was with that. But, uh, but nonetheless, it was an easy fix. I hate for anything to go wrong. Uh, with 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 the stuff, you know, I I missed it, you know, sending it out to him and and you know it it was a mistake. Um, so, but uh, he was able to fix it easily, just drilling out the holes, and he was on his way. Um, now going to the battery trays and all that stuff. Would you kind of kind of see in here the black? <laughs> um, there's a bat. There's a tray for mounting the uh, the ESC, which are the two. This is the one I want to hit on specifically because of the a question. Um, there's two trays, uh, two plates 
Uh, the reason there's two plates is because, again, this kit is sold to be used as a clawed or an, a solid axle. So if a clawed, generally you're running two ESCs unless you have a dual running ESC. Um, so you have two of these to mount the ESCs with. Um, and then you have the two, like I said before, I mount my battery in one. I put my ESCs, one on either side and, and there, and put it in the bottom to keep everything trying to keep everything as low as possible in the chassis. Um, and then you can also mount the receiver in between if you want, if you didn't want to use a receiver box. Uh, I like the receiver box just because you never know when you're going to get it wet, and it's a good thing to keep it, uh, keep everything dry. Um, then in, in, in the back, you ha I have the receiver box. You can put it up front. You can put the battery in the back. You can put the ESC up front. Uh, the best thing about this, and, and people may may not agree is the the almost infinite things or places you can put stuff on this on this truck the body post holes you got up here on the top for your body post whichever you want to use you can use the smt uh, body post you got to cut them off and then just drill into this to mount them i think uh if, i don't know how and i don't physically have my own smt chassis um but i know they work because he was doing it on his he mounted it between the rails just fine um so, you know, all these holes have a, a purpose if you use them for it, um, and if you don't, then, you know, it is what it is. But uh, that's pretty much it. Um, and then another thing, this is what, this is the piece that Tony used to mount his ESC and receiver to, which is fine. Um People have done some crazy stuff with this that I never thought of. And when I say crazy, just obviously things I didn't think of that actually turn out to be uh, really good really good ideas and they work well like this. Or there's uh, another guy, um, Victor, that used this and hard mounted it and has thumb screws that hold it in so he can have a hard mount for his battery tray to hold it in place and just have thumb screws to take the battery in and out which is pretty cool um i didn't think of that so i mean it's it's unique um it's a good use of of the materials and you know with this stuff if you ever if you ever get this and you run into any problems um for your given application if i got to make something special for it to to help out or make it work i will um obviously i can't think of everything when it comes to this stuff, um, I'm just one person looking at this. But uh, uh, if, if there's ever any inputs from anybody that has them, or if you have a question, or you see something that you would want to address, or or whatnot, let me know. Um, I mess around and, and say this is the best chassis on the market, and you know, of course, my bias is that it is <laughs> because I made it, but um, I truly want it to be the best that it can be. Um, obviously, I, I understand you're not going to please everybody, and I don't care to please everybody. Um, but I will do what is in my power to make changes and, and corrections to uh, to see that it that it, it becomes the best that it can be, and uh, that people enjoy it, and uh, go from there. But so with all that being said, um, basically the, the kit for this is almost, it's pretty much an axle ready kit, uh, axle electronics ready kit. So you get electronics mounting kits, you get the sway bars and links, um, you get the upper and lower, um, the upper and lower four link bars and trailing arms, um, Let's see what else. Uh, yeah, I mean basically every everything, uh, everything with the axles, drive shafts, and electronics and shop is is in a kit. Um, and you know the, the right now I think they're still on sale. Uh, it's three twenty five something like that for the kit. And again, all the chassis is 5052. Uh, the crossbars are 6061. The current 
sway bars that are on here are 6061. The new ones will be 7075. All the links on here are 7075. Um, so the nice, strong, durable uh, components. You know, obviously the only thing I don't have control over the rod ends. Um, but those are Traxxas heavy duty rod ends, and uh, uh, it's probably about the best ones that I could find. Uh, I went through several different SDS, and and I went through some low C, uh, RPM, and all that stuff, and I found that, th that these particular Traxxas links uh, tended to work the best and hold up the best um, for this kind of application. Of course, depending on how you drive it, you never have a problem. Or if you drive it like you stole it, you, you may have nothing but problems. I mean, it just depends. It all depends on, on your driving style and everything. So, uh, um, but, you know, I've done the best I can with it. Like I said, I'll, I'll start offering these Enjora axles. So basically, um, you could get one of these kits pretty much as a slider you need shocks and tires and wheels and then your electronics obviously and the transmission um, on them with the axles that I that are pictured here um, just a standard front and rear, rear setup and then four wheel steer would be an option if you want them as well um, again I'm not I'm not I'm not in this hobby to I'm not in this hobby making this stuff to make a killing um, I'm I'm in it to have fun minute to try to offer um, the best products that I can for a reasonable price for people just getting into the hobby or even people that have been in it a while um, and not have to spend two or three thousand dollars on a, on a truck uh, as this one's built right now um, it's probably around twelve hundred dollars um, and obviously I think it's a thousand to twelve hundred somewhere in that, in that ballpark. I'm not exactly sure off the top of my head, and that's and that's ready to run. That would that would have a radio. I mean, you basically throw batteries in it and you go. But the ESC and motor. If I did a if I did a kit, a ready to run kit, it would have a Castle Sidewinder and a 3800 um, KV motor in it. So it'd be tuned down a little bit, um, but it would it'd be comparable to a SMT-10 or well it'd, it'd be more than comparable to a SMT-10 it'd be a lot better um, um, so you'd be looking somewhere around a thousand a thousand dollars twelve hundred um, depending on how how it was built out with the electronics and everything but as you see it right there it's somewhere around a thousand twelve hundred dollars um, so it's not bad I mean there's other ones out there that are selling for seven eight hundred dollars um. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not knocking them by any means. It's just um. It is. So, anyways, um. That is the APEP chassis. That is the APEP the way I built it. Um, with the components that I put into it. Um, I love the way it handles now. I've got the suspension dialed in. If you, if you look at JERRC. On Facebook, there's a video, a drop video of it, the, the last one I did, and um, I think it did pretty well. It was only for about four feet high, which you know, in a or anything like that, unless you're just trying to to boot it, and four or five foot is plenty. Um, but it lands nice. It it's got plenty of power to work. Um, just overall, I love the way it handles uh, the Percy's. I haven't put that much into it. The suspension is not quite dialed in because I use that more as a test truck. Um, so all my new stuff that I make goes in that truck and I just launch it. Um, I got a four and a half foot ramp, dirt ramp, which kind of sucks because it's I'm in Florida, so it's hard to get a good launch off it. It kind of throws you weird and crazy. Um, but nonetheless, you can get a good eight to ten feet high you can get probably 20 to 30 feet uh, far depending on how fast you're going um, so it's a good jump and it tests out the the components and stuff that i put in my trucks um 
So, I mean, it, it, it does its job, and, that, and that's what the Percy's truck for. I got Firestorms on it, which I'm not a fan of. They're too bouncy. They're just, I don't know. I don't like those tires. Um, maybe someone likes them. I don't know, but I'm not a big fan myself. Um, uh, Booster, what's going on, man? Sorry, I ain't seen. <laughs> um, but, uh, but, yeah, so, I mean, that's, that's, that's my beater truck. This is my baby. Um, actually, I might be getting rid of this chassis, the, the green chassis uh, that you see here. Um, and I also have a black one, um, an anodized black one as well that I'm probably going to look to get rid of. Um, I got a, a new line coming in, those trucks up. It's the same chassis. There's some minor, 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 minor tweaks to it um, just to give the... Uh, just to give the the more versatility for bodies there's a way it's set up right now basically the mortise and body is the only one that really fits it right you can get a truck body to fit it but the grave diggers it, it fits it but it's not a nice it's not a real good fit but um nonetheless i don't want i don't want to keep rambling um you guys for those of you that checked out the video thanks for checking it out um if you like what you see, hit subscribe, ring the bell. I'm going to start doing some more videos and stuff just just like this. Just BS sessions kind of going over over the trucks. I actually have uh, a uh, ground pounder chassis set up that I'm going to end up probably either giving away or selling for dirt cheap. Um, that uh, one of my clawed axles, I bought, I bought it cheap. And had clawed axles on it, so it, so I robbed them up. Now I got a, a chassis that I'm not going to use. So I, I'll, I'll end up probably raffling, or not raffling away, but doing something promo to give it away. And or uh, if someone wants to buy it, you know, I'll, I'll sell it dirt cheap. But anyways, I want to thank everybody for checking out the video. Um, like I said, like, subscribe, ring the bell, and. Uh, Hopefully we'll see you in the next video. Uh, plan on probably going over the Percy's. Once I get the new stuff in, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a walkthrough of, of the axles and everything and show everybody what they are because they are a good alternative, a good cheap alternative for like 140, 150 bucks. I think like 170 if you get dual front and rear steer. But I mean for the price you can't beat it. I mean really, really you can't. Um, solid aluminum, you know. Like I said, I'm not I'm <laughs> I'm not endorsed or anything by these guys. I just, I, I have it on my trucks. I've tried a lot of, of the cheaper axles, or I should say the cheaper axles, um, to find something that, that works, that people can use. It's not going to break the bank. It's not going to cost you a hundred and something dollars per axle or more um, to get into this hobby and have a good quality product. These, these to me, of I think five or six different types that I've tried, these are hands down um, the best for the money. Um, of course, if if you got a lot of money and you don't care to blow it, I mean, there's better options out there. Or if you just want the top of the line, then that you know that's you. But but again, I do this for me, and I do it to try to help other people. Get, and hopefully, it does somebody good, and 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 they can use the information to their advantage. But anyways, again, thanks guys for watching. Uh, stay tuned for, for more videos. I'll keep them posted up here as long as I'm doing them. And uh, as always, enjoy, enjoy the RC hobby.